Hello, this is Stephen Nichols, and I'm the Director of Business Development for Mission Critical Systems, a SharePoint development company based in Denver, Colorado. And today I have a quick presentation for you on 11 ways to share documents using SharePoint and Office 2013. Uh, so we'll talk first about attachments and how people uh, uh, typically share documents now. And that's that they attach documents to emails and then send emails out to groups of people and uh, try and collaborate using email. And now there are a few uh, pros to that, obviously. It's very easy and friendly and everyone's familiar with it, but there are a few problems. Uh, here's an example. Uh, let's say I have a budget that I'm sending out to a group of people. And I uh, type up the budget, and I think it's right. So I type up an email and attach that budget, and it says final budget is the name of the attachment, and I send it out to 15 department heads to have them review it. As soon as I send that, that email, I realize that I've made a mistake, and I need to make an update to it. So quickly, before anyone can open up the email, I go back into my document, I make some changes to it, and then I send out a second email saying, sorry about that, and the attachment is called final budget V2. This might happen a few times, so I'm going to get a V3 and a V4, and eventually they get the right budget out uh, from my perspective. So all the department heads then look through that budget and they make their changes. But some people make changes to V2 and V3, and some people make it to the right version. Uh, but in, in any case, they all email that back to me, and I have to go through and aggregate the changes together into a final, final budget. And then that starts to cycle over again. I send final, final budget out. Final budget, final final budget V2, V3, V4, and um, after a little while, we just say uh, all changes must be in by this date, and that's the drop dead date. So that happens, and then six months later, I'm trying to find the budget, and I can't remember was it uh, was it final final V2 or final final V6 or what was the last what was the final 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 budget? I can't remember which one we settled on, and that's one of the problems with attachment is when you have multiple copies of the same document. Uh, controlling versions and controlling collaboration can be really a, a very difficult challenge. So SharePoint has a few ways of solving that problems, those problems, and one of the ways is through inviting people. Uh, a lot of the things I'll show today are not actually, you're not actually going to have a browser window open for it because uh, a lot of interaction you have with SharePoint is done through, um, directly through Microsoft Word or Excel or whatever Office program you're using, and this is an example of that. I have a Word document open here, and if I click on, uh, after saving it into SharePoint, if I click on the file at the top uh, left-hand corner, and then go down to the Share button, I can uh, type in the name of the people who should see the document, or their email addresses, and that can be several people, or just one, or, or even groups coming out of Active Directory. And then I can choose if they're able to edit the document, or view the document, and then I can type in a message to them, and click Share. And what they'll receive is an email message or a message in SharePoint that will have uh, uh, whatever I typed in the message field and then also a link to the document. And that gives them access to maybe either make changes to it or just to view the document. I can have different groups of people have different levels of access. So maybe all the department heads can edit it, but all the other people can just view the document or you know, really whatever level I want to have for that. And that's uh, uh, much better than doing an attachment. It solves the problem that I talked about a second ago with the budget. Now, in some cases, you might also have a document that uh, I don't want to go through and list every person who should have access to it. It's really just, you know, uh, a regular uh, document. It's, it's, it's not, there's nothing sensitive about it or personal. Uh, maybe there's people outside the organization I want to save, uh, uh, share the document with. And in that case, sending the link might be the best way to go. So again, from Word, I'll click on File at the top of the screen, click on Share, Email, and then Send a Link. This will open up an a, a email message for me out of Outlook, and you'll see the link there uh, listed in the body of the email. I can then type in whoever I want to send this, this document to, and uh, uh, they'll be able to access the document by clicking on that link and seeing it in a web browser. Now, you'll notice it does have uh, here at the end of it, there's a question mark web equals one. Now, the purpose of that is that when you click on the link, it will open up the document in the web browser. You'll have a light version of Word or Excel or whatever the appropriate um, software is uh, to be able to, to look at the document and maybe perhaps make edits to the document too. So that's um, maybe not always useful. Maybe you want to just send the document. And if that's the case, I can just uh, backspace out that question mark web equals one, and it will just send a link to the regular document, and that's fine as well. Uh, let's see. So the next option is going to be presenting online. I do this a lot. You know, my role, I talk to a lot of clients outside of the, of the company, 
and uh, you know they're interested in a presentation or or something like that. And sometimes setting up a, a whole webinar or a WebEx session uh, isn't worth the time. So what I can do is just uh, create a regular conference call, I'll just get on the phone call with the person, and then use the present online feature in Office to be able to show them the document. So to do that, I'll go to the File button again, click on Share, click on Present Online, and then click on Present Online here, and that creates uh, a little link there. Uh, this link can be sent to anybody using the Send Email or Copy Link feature. Uh, it can be sent to hundreds of people, thousands of people, or just a couple of people. And then when I click on Start Presentation, it will actually open up the document uh, in a, a kind of a browser, and they're able to watch me as I either scroll through the slides in a PowerPoint presentation, or look through the Word document, or the Excel document, or you know whatever it is, and they're able to see the screen like it's a webinar, uh, even though it's not, even though it's it's there was no no uh, setup that's it's usually required for a webinar interface. Now within SharePoint itself, within the SharePoint window in the browser, you can do a lot of these things too. So for example, to send a link, you'll click on the ellipsis, and then you'll grab that link there, copy it, put it into an email or whatever wherever you want to put that, and then send it off. I can also share from from SharePoint by clicking on the ellipsis, click on share, and then this looks familiar to you. You type in the names and email addresses for the people who need to see it. You type in the level of access they should have and click on share, and that will send the invitation out to look at the document too. And now mobile is also something that's very important for me. I'm often in uh, clients' offices talking to them about things, and they say, oh, it would be great if I could see this presentation or this, this flyer or whatever that you've created. Uh, great, I can do that right from your office. And the way I do that is using the Office mobile app. Now, I have an Android phone. Uh, it also works for Apple phones and for Windows phones, too. But in any case, you'll open up the um, Office mobile app. You'll find the document that you need to, to send over to them. Uh, click on the Menu button. Click on Share. Choose the um, app with which you're going to share the document. I'll choose Email here. And then it shows up as an attachment. And I can just email that attached document directly from my phone uh, to, the, to the client that I'm sitting in front of. It's kind of neat. Uh, other options, too, for co-authoring. Uh, co-authoring is probably one of the, the coolest features in SharePoint 2013 and Office 2013. Uh, what it allows people to do is to simultaneously edit the exact same document. Now, I have one note listed here first, and I think one note is something that's maybe a little underused um, unfairly. It, I, 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 I use it myself, and I love uh, OneNote, but I think it's still kind of gained in popularity. Um, let's see, the scenario for this one is going to be is going to be this. Let's say you have a conference call, and you have uh, 10 people on the call, and it would be really nice if they were all in the same room. You'd have a whiteboard. You'd be able to whiteboard concepts and talk through things and um, uh, work through that. But you don't have a whiteboard on, on a, a conference call. So with OneNote co-authoring, what you can do is uh, set up a OneNote, present, uh, OneNote notebook and then send out a link to that notebook to everyone who's going to be on the conference call. Uh, everyone's able to open up the same OneNote notebook, and you actually see 5 or 10 or 15 or whatever cursors on the same notebook typing, and everyone can take notes in the same place. Then, of course, these, these notes are permanent, so if, uh, you know, six months down the road I want to remember what happened in that meeting, I can go back and see the notes that everyone had typed uh, back then. OneNote's very cool, and that's a, uh, worth a presentation definitely in and of itself. Uh, Word also has co-authoring. In this case, you'll see the two different cursors for the two different people making edits to it. You'll also see the uh, two names for those people listed there. Uh, co-authoring is also available in Excel, Visio, and PowerPoint, although it, it uh, acts a little bit differently and is delivered a little differently in each of those programs. But we can show you a demonstration of that, too, if you're interested in it. Um, Let's see, so for, then for SharePoint 2, uh, SharePoint is obviously a collaboration platform. We had started off talking about email and how email was being abused by sending out attachments all the time with it. Uh, uh, SharePoint also has solutions for how to uh, relieve some of the stress off of email, and one of those is using uh, t uh, discussions as opposed to emails. So in the old days, you'd send out you know, an, an email to somebody, maybe carbon copy 15 people on it, and say, hey, you know, uh, I was thinking about client X, and this is what I thought and then send that out, and there'd be a conversation, right? Everyone's emailing back and forth, and uh, then you have to go through and, and, and read all the lines, see what everybody said on that. So those discussions can be brought into a discussion board uh, using SharePoint, and that's um, a bet better place to put that. It's uh, much easier to read and keep up with there. It doesn't clutter up your inbox. Uh, this is a very simple discussion board in which you can type a subject, a body, and determine if it's a question or not. Uh, from here, if I have a document that I want to uh, you know, have a conversation about, I have three different options. I can link to the document. 
uh, which in which case I'm using just the link that we showed earlier, um, and then people can click on that and view the document that way. I could also upload a file, which would be you know equivalent to attaching a document to a discussion, and then I can embed code. So this presentation won't cover it, but there is a way with um, with SharePoint to be able to have uh, to embed a document into a web page. In which case you'd have you know a PowerPoint presentation show up in a little window on the web page, and a person would be able to kind of flip through the slides of the PowerPoint presentation. Or you might have an Excel uh, um, a document showing up in a little view, and you're able to look through the spreadsheets uh, within the Excel document. It's a very cool feature, and that's something that all, could also be done within a discussion board to have a conversation about a, a specific document. I can also attach uh, documents to meetings, use the attach there, or I can embed the code into the description. And then the final option is going to be wikis. Uh, a wiki is not really a document, right? A wiki is just a web page in SharePoint. And I can, um, you know, put whatever content I want to uh, into that web page. Uh, the idea with a wiki is that um, perhaps many more than one person is able uh, would be able to contribute to this document. So it's used very commonly in uh, knowledge bases or um, you know best practices discussions, lessons learned, things like that, where several people might be contributing. So those are a few different ideas for how to share documents and sharing information on SharePoint and Office 2013. Again, I'm Stephen Nichols. I'm the Director of Business Development for Mission Critical Systems, and you see my contact information there. Uh, please reach out if you have any questions at all about SharePoint. I love talking about it, and I'd be happy to talk to you about your project and uh, you know, see if we have some ideas for that. Uh, but in any case, thank you for your time. Uh, best of luck with your SharePoint projects, and I hope to talk to you soon.